coming up on The Potter's Touch. Are you a kingdom without a king? Are you so busy managing the emotional relationships that you have that you don't have the energy to think the thoughts you need to think to go where you need to go? Are you so busy managing your feelings and the feeling the people around you and trying to make them feel what you feel and, and need what you need and want what you want that you're not making progress in life? This is the Potter's Touch. Greetings, friends, in the name of Jesus Christ, our King. I'm so excited to have this opportunity to share the word of the Lord with you. I'm grateful for what God is doing in your life, and I want to contribute something that I believe will help you in this season of your life. No matter how blessed or successful you or I might be, there are moments in your life that you go through tests and trials just like anybody else. People don't understand that. With every blessing, there's always a battle. And I wanna share this word with you that will help you with the battle so that you can enjoy the blessing because sometimes you're so busy in the fight, you lose sight of the victory. I believe this is gonna bless your life. The message is called, This Is Not The Time to lose your head. This is not the time to lose your head. Take a look at this word. It will bless your life. Let's take a look. Paul writes to the church of Ephesus and tells them to put on the whole armor of God because you are under attack. There is not a person in this room that is not constantly up under attack. No matter how blessed you've been, no matter how successful, no matter how accomplished, no matter how healthy, no matter how fruitful you are, somewhere in your life, you are either being attacked or about to be attacked in some area of your life. And God says, I'm going to bless you, but you've got to dress for the battle while you receive the blessing. With every blessing, there is a battle. I would venture to say the greater the blessing, the greater the battle. The enemy would not send that level of battle against you if there were not that level of blessing before you. The level of battle you face is an indication of the level of blessings that you stand to receive. No robber robs an empty house. Nobody holds up a bag lady because she doesn't have anything to steal. If you're up under attack, there's something to be gained. So the Bible says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the wiles of the devil, the wiles of the devil, the tactics, the antics of the devil. And then he says, once you get it all on, having done all to stand. See, you got all dressed up not to run. You got dressed up to stand not to give place or territory to the devil, not to evacuate the turf that's yours. Did you hear that? Not to evacuate the turf that is yours. And he said, if you're going to hold on to what I have given you, because I have given you some things that you are yet to possess, And in order to possess what I've given you, to take it out of the euphoria of an idea and snatch it into the realm of a possession, you're going to have to stand, having done all to stand. That's your willpower, your strength, your might, your intensity, having done all to stand. The first stand belongs to you. You have to do that. Stop asking God to make you stand if you're not willing to stand. You have to have an investment in what God has given you and having done all to stand. You won't get to the second stand until you run out of the first one. Having done all to stand, then it says, stand therefore with your loins girt about with truth. And as he begins to equip us for battle, he comes down to the helmet of salvation. How important is it to protect your head? When the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, for the pulling down of strongholds, look at how we got to fight, for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down 
Oh, you got it. Imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against what? The knowledge. The knowledge of God. The high things that are coming against you are coming against what you know about God. What you know about God. You know you're healed. The symptoms come to convince you that you're not. You know you're free. I thought you did. Y'all know you're free? Okay. Y'all know you're free? The enemy comes against your freedom to convince you that you don't have what God has already released you. The Bible calls his attack imaginations. <laughs> You're being fought by imaginations, shadows and ghosts. Some of you are stressed to death over what ifs and maybes. You've been stabbed by suppose. <laughs> you lay in the bed wrestling with ghosts of what ifs and maybes and suppose and I think and I heard and I felt and you wake up tired in the morning because you, you might have slept but you didn't rest because all in your sleep you've been fighting. The Bible says there is a helmet that will protect your head. Head speaks to leadership. Head speaks to government. Most people are living their lives from a heart place and not a head place. They are so engrossed with what the heart feels that they have not covered what the head thinks. Most people are governed by their emotions. They're having a hard experience in a head fight. You will never win a battle if you're having a heart experience in a head fight. You're telling the enemy how you feel has nothing to do with what you know. And if you're going to deal with a knower, never approach a knower with feelings. You've got to approach a knower with facts. The enemy wants to cut off your head and leave you with feelings. Real decisions that move your life along are not coming out of your emotions, they're coming out of your head. Real opportunities that God would open up for you have to come out of your head and not out of your feelings. You, there are so many people that are so abstract and they're just moving along from day to day out of their emotions and their fear. I don't know, I'm just not feeling it today. I'm just not feeling it today. Come back on Thursday. I might be feeling on Thursday. I'm not in the mood for this. I can't handle this. And every time you do it, you are canceling out opportunities because it is with the mind that we serve the Lord. A person who does not function out of their head is a person without government. A person who moves totally out of their emotions is exempt from the greater opportunity than life because you will forfeit what God has given you because of how you feel. God did not promise you that your feelings would line up with the facts. How many of us are living a headless life? Because we have not separated how we feel from what we know. You can't, you can't work with people like that. You really can't work with people like that because if I criticize your work, it doesn't mean I criticize you. And to have to babysit your feelings, when I don't have time to babysit your feelings, I need you to correct the problem and go back to work. It's not personal if you do it right. 
Isn't that what God told Cain? Why is thy countenance fallen, Cain? Why are you tripping out about this stuff? Why are you jealous of Abel? If thou doest not well, will I not receive you? He said, I'm not against you, Cain. I'm against what you did. And if you fix what you did, I'll bless you like I bless them. So stop tripping, Cain. Get your heart out of the way of your head, and I will move you forward. I know that's culture shock to a lot of you. Because everything you've ever gotten, you've gotten out of your feelings. But let me tell you, the devil is not fighting you over your feelings. He is fighting you over your head. He is giving you images and imaginations and threats of disaster to send your head into a panic mode so that you will digress mentally from the leadership that the rest of you needs. It has to come from the facts and not the feelings. It is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. It is written, it is written. Not one time do you hear Jesus say, I'm so hungry, devil. I'm so hungry. This is one time. Let me turn this stone to bread. Because a brother like me got all kind of rumblings going on in my stomach like here. I've been out here 40 days. Devil, now, now, you know, 40 days. You ought to have a little compassion on me. He did not approach the devil with feelings because the devil has no compassion. Whatever you do, don't lose your head. You pull your feelings out of it. Pull your insecurities out of it, your vulnerabilities, those childhood voices that come back to attack you the rest of your life are the tools that the devil uses to cause you to digress from what God created you to be and stand on what you know. Still to come on The Potter's Touch. So if I was the devil, I'd do everything I could to keep your head foggy, to keep your mind all tied up to keep your emotions governing your head to the point that you can't even think a clear thought because the oil will fall. Thou anointest my head with oil. Now my cup runs over. My cup can't run over if my head is anointed with oil. My cup is only catching the residue of what my head got first. Are you under? The Shepherd's Watch. Alarms go off that you can't even hear. And angels start flying in that you can't even see because I am sheltered by the Shepherd. For your gift of any size, you will receive this critical message, Sheltered by the Shepherd, on CD from the series, The Shepherd's Watch. I can't even tell you all the stuff that almost got me. If nobody in the whole church praises God, I will bless the Lord at all times. And when your gift is $70 or more, you will receive Bishop's series, The Shepherd's Watch, on DVD. Your sister died from it, and yet some kind of way you're still here. The shelter of the shepherd brought me through the storm. However, for your gift of $125 or more, we will also include T.D. Jake's new book, Destiny, Step Into Your Purpose, the Destiny Christian Study Guide Workbook, and Destiny Step Series on DVD. Find your safety under the Shepherd's Watch today. The Bible says in 1 Samuel, speaking about Eli, the word of the Lord was scarce in those days. The word of the Lord was scarce in those days and there was no open vision. Eli was living, but he was losing his head. Vision comes from your head. Word is spoken out of your mouth, which is in your head. The word was scarce, the vision was dim and the kingdom was collapsing because of what was empty in the head had destroyed the success of the kingdom, of the priesthood, of the sanctity of the ministry because the priesthood was headless. 
sexuality was running amok. Hoffner and Phineas were going through the church, going through the women, like a fox going through a hen house because the place was headless. Eli was not strong enough to chasten his own child because his emotions were leading and not his head. Oh, it's going to be rough in here today. The word of the Lord was scarce in those days. The Bible said there was no open vision. And ultimately, when everything was said and done, they went out to fight against the Philistines. And they were defeated. And he could have withstood that. Hophni was killed, his son. He could have withstood that. Phinehas was killed as well. He could have withstood that. But when they told him that the glory of the Lord was departed, he fell off his throne. And of all things, he broke his neck. His head came off. That's what I'm trying to tell you. The last little piece of government fell off. And whenever you see the head come off, there is a shift of authority. Eli lost his head. Samuel comes to a place of prominence because the head, the decapitation of the head is the removal of the government. Are you a kingdom without a king? Are you so busy managing the emotional relationships that you have that you don't have the energy to think the thoughts you need to think to go where you need to go? Are you so busy managing your feelings and the feeling of the people around you and trying to make them feel what you feel and, and need what you need and want what you want that you're not making progress in life because you are leading with your heart and not with your head. You can't cry your way out. You can't fuss your way out. You done snapped your neck four or five times and it didn't change your life. The definition of lunacy is to keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result. So why are you doing what doesn't work. If flipping out on her isn't working, why are you still doing it? If giving him a piece of your mind hadn't worked in the first 15 years, wouldn't it be a good time now to change strategies? Why are we loyal to ineffectiveness? Why are we loyal with ineffectiveness? We date effectiveness, but we marry ineffectiveness. We visit effectiveness for the weekend on a Sunday in a motivational message and a special television show. We, we love to visit it, but we are married to habits that are ineffective and we are loyal to things that we know don't work, but because this is how I feel. Take unto you the helmet of salvation. Eli lost his head and the power shifted and the world changed. And whenever that which was has lost his head, that which is will come to power lost his head. They say, Ichabod, the glory hath departed. I guess it did. The glory departs because the head is gone. I told you the anointing comes on the head. If there's no head, there's no glory. Eli broke his neck, lost his head. Yes, the glory departed because the glory only falls on a clear head. So if I was the devil, I'd do everything I could to keep your head foggy, to keep your mind all tied up, to keep your emotions governing your head to the point that you can't even think a clear thought because the oil 
will fall. Thou anointest my head with oil. Now my cup runs over. My cup can't run over if my head is anointed with oil. My cup is only catching the residue of what my head got first. John the Baptist is preaching out in the wilderness. He's different from his daddy. His daddy was a church preacher, preached in the synagogues. John the Baptist preached in the wilderness. His daddy dressed in priestly clothes. John the Baptist dressed in camel hair. Wild, ate wild locusts and honey. But he was preaching more effectively in the wilderness than his father had ministered in the temple. He was doing real good. And then he says something. He says, I must decrease that he might increase. He said, there's going to be a shift. And when the shift comes, I must decrease that he might increase. When did the shift come? When they cut his head. The cutting of the head is the shifting of government. Do you hear what I'm saying? Good God of mercy. Do you hear what I'm trying to tell you this morning? There is a shift going on in your life and it starts with your head. 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 The slave masters knew it. You can teach the slaves how to do anything but read. Why was reading forbidden? Because if you got it in your head, you could get it in your life. They said, our change cannot hold an informed head. When your head comes out, it won't be long until everything begins to shift. Touch your neighbor and tell him I feel a shift. So they took Jesus to Pilate. And they, Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Are you the head of the Jews? And Jesus said, thou sayest. So they, they said, put a, put a sign up and call him the king of the Jews. They tried to get Pilate to take it back. He said, what I have spoken, I have spoken. This carpenter's son is the head of the Jews. So they took the head of the Jews and they took him to the head of a mountain. And the mountain was called Golgotha. And when they called it Golgotha, Golgotha means stone. So they brought the head to a head. Touch your neighbor and say, there's about to be a shift. Whenever heads get together, there will be a shift. But he told the disciples, he said, I got to go away. Don't preach yet. Go to Jerusalem because the head has gone up in a cloud and the body was left looking up and the angel said to the body, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing at this head? For this same head that you see us sin shall descend in like manner. And the book said, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, and they were in one place with one accord, here comes the shift. Slap somebody and tell them it's coming back. It's coming back. It's coming back. It's coming back. Devil, you should have killed me when you had the chance. But I'm getting my hand. Oh, I'm getting my hand.
I've got to stop there. I'm really not finished with this. I think it is provocative, it is powerful, and it is also quite important to understand how to keep your head, a level head in the time of battle, because we all face him. But I want you to understand that you can stand in the middle of the test and the trial, and you can not only stand, but you can overcome and be successful in spite of the struggles that are inherent with being who you are. I get it. I totally, 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 totally get it. Before I close, I do want to mention this. I want you to get this. Get your hands on this. It is literally a tour guide into your destiny. The book is called Destiny, Step Into Your Purpose. You need to understand that destiny is pulling you to an expected end. And how do you step into it? I'll share it in this book. It'll bless your life and strengthen you and encourage you because I know what it is to have to climb up with one hand and fight back with the other. But together, we can get it done. God bless you, friends. I thank God for you. It's been a real pleasure to be with you today. And I pray for you. And I pray that you will pray for me. And to all of you that are getting ready to meet me at Megafest, I'm getting ready for you. So I got to go. God bless you. Take care. I'll see you soon. I want to make sure that when you leave here, that you leave here on a whole nother level. You don't have to live in the dark feeling like you never know what to do. God will lead you and guide you and direct you. He's not some addendum. He's not just all Jesus. Do you know how strong his name is? I just need you to reach up in the heavenly and grab big. I need you to release it over your life. You want to just reach back and dig in and see what God did in your life then. It'll give you a clue about where you're going now. Every day you wake up and you're adding to the kingdom, you're subtracting from hell. And that's why the devil can't stand you. I know that there's a force on the planet much higher than the facts, and it's called the truth of the Word of God. The anointing is coming on your life to change your season. Anoint me! I'm sorry, Brian. We're going to have to let you go. Failure is not the end of We've had to make staff changes. Listen for Destiny's authentic call. Destiny awaits you. Will you take the first step? Destiny is written to connect what's in you with the purpose that awaits you. The first action step requires faith. Order Destiny today, everywhere books are sold. There is more. You want to redeem the years you lost out of your life? Stop following your emotions. Go at it head first. And God said, I will give you back the time you lost. I will restore from the mistakes you made. I will do a new thing in you and the former things will pass away. When you stop sniffling and whimpering and crying and having tantrums and schizophrenia and be sober and get a grip on yourself, God said, I'll open up the windows of heaven and I'll pull you out of blessing. You won't even have room enough to receive. This is the power of